Welcome to Property Law 101. I am Sarah Bronin and I created the series to help you understand the basics of property law. I'd love to hear from you uh, as you watch these videos, uh, whether it's on Twitter or through my website, or you can sign up to my mailing list. So with that, this series covers four fundamental questions. What is property? How do we acquire property? What can we do with property? And finally, how do we hold interests in property? Today, we're going to be talking about the first of these, the nature of property. So let's start with the concept of ad chylum. So ad chylum, it means to the heavens. And it is this ancient doctrine that suggests that property owners own all the way up to the heavens and all the way down to the depths of the earth, down to its core. As you're gonna see throughout this series, this concept, the notion of ad chylum just isn't necessarily borne out by the law. First, for example, there is eminent domain where government can take ownership of your land. Even the constitution gives governments that right. There's adverse possession where a squatter can take ownership of your land. In oil and gas, we have the rule of capture. A neighboring property owner can essentially stick a straw into their property and slurp up all of the oil on yours. But on an everyday basis, probably the most common incidences of property ownership being infringed upon are overflights, airplane flights that happen overhead on properties all around the country all the time. So that brings me to this case, Hinman versus Pacific Air Transport. And to think about this case, you first have to transport yourself back to uh, 1929 in LA County. Here we have a property owner who has 72 acres of land in Burbank. He's enjoying his property quietly. And yet uh, again and again, he sees something overhead and it is an airplane. Again, 1929, the advent of the airplane age. And this guy is having none of it. He says, this is damaging my property. Uh, I'd like to stop this. And he takes the Pacific Air Transport Company to court. He asked the court, the Ninth Circuit, can I stop these people from flying over my property? Or at least can I please get damages for the amount of property uh, rights and infringement that they have done? So by the time we get to this decision, uh, we're in 1936, uh, again, you know, still early in the air, airline age. And this case is really all about applying old rules to new ideas and new technology. So first the court has to ask how ad chylum applies, looking back to this ancient doctrine, do property owners really own all the way up to the heavens and all the way down to the depths of the earth? Well, this court uses common sense to come to its conclusion. The court says, you know, practically speaking, how much of the sky can property owners really claim? They might claim the airspace over the ground plane to the extent that they put buildings or other improvements on it. They might claim on top of that a reasonable buffer area so that they maintain quiet enjoyment of land. But realistically, even our tallest buildings, I mean, we call them skyscrapers, cannot occupy everything we think of as the sky. So it's for that reason that the court says that claims to exclusive use on the airspace must be tethered to the actual use of the property owner. So the court says the air like the sea is by its nature incapable of private ownership except in so far as one may actually use it. So what this means is that the ability to possess property for these purposes is fundamental to the question of whether it is property at all. In this situation, in other words, the nature of property hinges on actual possession. So the court goes on to say something really interesting. It says, this right is not fixed. It varies varying needs and is coextensive with them. 
So if ownership of the airspace varies, how does the court calculate it? The court establishes that for this particular kind of use, the property owner gets 150 feet above the ground plane. Presumably, if you're a property owner with a downtown skyscraper, you get a little bit more. So this case is important for several reasons. First, it suggests that property law evolves with new technologies. So this court never really had the occasion to consider how airspace should be considered until airplanes came around. Second, uh, the case illustrates how uh, practical practicalities might influence decision making. So the court might not have uh, been so willing to make explicit constraints on the ad kylum doctrine if it weren't uh, very aware of the fact that an entire industry, the airplane industry, hinged on its decision. So again, you see common sense, common elements, and, and evolving technology influencing property law. And this will be one of the themes of our series. So I'll leave it there. Thank you, and see you soon.